All right, Reality Wanted, we know you're obsessed with getting on reality TV and you're constantly emailing us, how do we get on the big shows? Forget the little ones, we want the Mark Burnett shows, Apprentice, Survivor, being smarter than a fifth grader apparently is very important to you. So we've managed to get an interview with the man who's created some of the best television. Mark Burnett, tell us a little bit about how you come up with these ideas. They're so different. How do you come up with them? I, I don't know, really. If I start to think about it too much, yeah, um, I'm just doing shows I like to do. I mean, Survivor, obviously, is like being stranded on a desert island. It's very Robinson Crusoe. And I think Apprentice has a little bit of Wall Street, the movie Wall Street in it. Fifth Grader was as a result of you know, me and the people developing it with me realizing we couldn't do our 10 year olds homework so it was uh, none of us can right right that's exactly right you know but the important thing to get on any of my shows from a casting perspective yeah. um is that we don't want people who want to be on television we just want people who want the experience right see i was on the apprentice i got cast i got the okay from mark burnett so yeah give a little bit more info to the reality wanted doc people how about they get the okay from you too well you got on the apprentice because you're very smart and driven and so that's what the apprentice requires and survivor is all about wanting the adventure not wanting to be on tv this is the girl you want to be like not only did she get cast she won and then she actually parlayed that into a career are you hearing that reality stars you can do it yeah. tell us about how you got cast um well i walked it was in minneapolis i was born and raised in fargo north dakota so i drove four hours to do the open casting call yeah. which is like 700 people and I figured, you know, I only got 30 seconds to make an impression. You gotta wow them. You gotta wow them. Yeah. I mean, of course, you, good looks are fine, but like you had to have a personality to be on TV, right. first off. So I took my number, which was 110, uh -huh. number 110, and I pasted it right on my forehead and nice. walked in. And they remembered the girl who walked in yeah. with her with her number pasted right. on her forehead. Because like, she's got personality. She's not just gonna be like, hello, yeah, I, I am a model. I was in a room of 300 <laughs> girls, so I was like, I gotta stand. I got it was like five minutes for right. 300 girls and just go like that. Right. And I'm sure all girls were smoking hot, like mom sure some of them were not but you know most of them are model-esque so yeah. you're like I have to stand out yeah. how do you do the transition from being reality star and a reality winner to being a host I think you know you had to have a certain part in you that can do it naturally yeah but then also just just be confident and just be I love it more because I can eat more I'm not like modeling we as much so when you're a model you're like someone else's image yeah. when you're a host yeah. you're like it is me I it's am the personality right. exactly yeah. and that's I love that because I have a really yeah. strong personality even on top model so it's great all of you want to get on The Bachelor. You're constantly sending in these applications saying, I'm the one, I'm the bachelorette, or I'm the man for this. We just look for outgoing personalities. We look for herpes-free bodies. That's very... Well, good luck with that. Yeah, good luck with that, exactly. <laughs> um, and, you know, the physical attraction, you know, they have to be good looking and, yeah. and uh, you know, but outgoing and, and, and sincere. You know, if, if you're there just to get on TV, yeah. It doesn't really help the show. Got it. And I think viewers can sense that, so we try to weed that out. Would you recommend I go on it? You're yeah. in. Yeah. What about the herpes issue? I, no herpes. Herpes free. I, I mean, I just got you checked. What's next? What ideas are brewing in your head what, well, that you can share? We know everyone's. A bunch of different shows right now. We have eight shows going in production, and um, you know, one of the most exciting ones is that we're doing a, a plus size bachelor for Fox called More to Love. You know, that. so yeah. you big girls, come on down. You know. You know, we're actually casting that on Reality Wanted right now. So any of you bigger girls with more to love, you got the curves, you got some booty. This is the man. He's going to give you the yay or nay. So get on there and apply. Give us another message for the large and lovely ladies of more to love. Well, it's it, your time has come, baby. Your time has come. One of our biggest things is Big Brother. You all want to know, how do we get on Big Brother? How do we get in this house and on the show? This is the woman who can give you the inside <laughs> scoop about it. So Big Brother, brilliant. Just Thank some you. people in a house hanging out, and now you know you're a billionaire or something uh, because not of it. Really, but I would, that, that's nice. <laughs> All right, so tell us who you look for for casting Big Brother. Um, you know, we are always looking for a different group that mixes together. Mm -hmm. So it's all about the group. Yeah. And it's extreme personalities, mm -hmm. it's uh, honestly it's sort of the girl next door versus yeah. the, you know, someone who could sort of be the villain. We're looking for people who are obviously unselfconscious, mm -hmm. extroverts, yeah. lots of energy, um, oh, yeah. nice, you know, game players ideally. Mm -hmm. 
um, who just jump off the page. And we can tell usually when we get submissions within the first 30 seconds yeah, if we're dealing with someone that is right for Big Brother. And it doesn't, I mean, not everyone is right for Big Brother. I mean, this is a tough psychological game that really takes a lot out of you. And so people have to be very strong mentally. From the contestants, because this is a reality casting website essentially, what type of people tend to make it on Survivor? We know people that like the outdoors, we get that, but personality wise. Three dimensional people. Yeah. And here's the here's the test. We'll have somebody walk into Survivor Casting and tell us a tragic story yeah. about a loved one being killed in an accident yeah. and we'll be asleep on the couch. Right. The next person will walk in and tell you a story about eating potato chip and you're laughing your ass off. Right. Which one gets on the show? Right, of course. Yeah, and that's it. You have to have a life. And I think I think right now what's happening in reality is there's a lot of casting directors doing it and a lot of people doing it, which is they're trying to be something. Right, like, oh, you're looking for the next, um, like, the boy next door, or you're looking for the glamour model instead of just, like, being yourself. Be you. Yeah. That's what makes you an individual. Yeah. And that's what I think we continue to do pretty well is find people that, we have a guy on this, this show this season, Coach, that is clearly delusional, probably if you had him evaluated, yeah. Don't you guys that you guys do have that. I was there. I've been in the the place that I will not mention where they basically torture you for a week. I've been there. I understand. So, um, yeah, how do some of those crazies get on there? Well, we do evaluate everyone psychologically, and if there's anybody that we think would be a harm yeah. to themselves or others, they don't get on the show. But right. if you're... If you have an inflated sense of self, like yeah. Coach does, yeah. you're perfect. Right, so delusional is okay for reality. Love yourself, think you're the most awesome person in the world, just don't be actually, like, nuts. If you're carrying a firearm, you're not getting on the show. We do a lot of reality casting. Everyone on our site is obsessed with being on shows like Millionaire. What yeah. type of person are you looking for for this next season? Well, really, we look for three things. One, why do you need the money? It doesn't mean you have to be like desperately poor, you don't have to be unemployed, but you've got to have a reason for something you want to go and do with the money. Right. Secondly, you've got to, we've got to feel like you stand a shot of answering the questions. If you have never read a book, if you've never seen a movie, if you've like never paid attention to the world around you, you would be a useless contestant. Yeah. And thirdly, we're just looking for that certain kind of magic that will make you interesting on television or will make people want to see you win. We are obsessed with people like you and why you had that special something that got you famous, essentially. Well, I'll tell you this, whenever you're real, you can't be denied. When I did So You Think You Could Dance, people saw my, they heard my opinion and saw my love for it, so they couldn't deny what I did. And then I had the talent to back it up. So America's Best Dance Crew, same thing. Yeah. I've been working with those people for years, but they know how real I am and how passionate I am and how much I love it. So I survived a Japanese game show. That's something actually that Reality Wanted has helped cast. We've, oh. we've helped you find those people that want to go out there. Great. I'm obsessed with the show. Tell us a little bit about the people that you are looking for when you cast shows like that. You know, you're listening. Any show that you do, you're always looking for a really good collection of personalities. Yeah. And, you know, it's not just, so. you know, you have to have the right mix of people. You don't want to have 12 class clowns because that right. won't be good. So you're looking for different parts of the country. Yeah. And, you know, for the Japanese show, they have to be pretty adventurous. Yeah. I mean, you got to... Right. You well, know, you're living in this little place, not only are you living in, like, Tokyo in this cramped yeah. quarters, but you're doing crazy stuff, like riding tricycles backwards on a conveyor belt yeah. while, like, fish are being thrown yeah. at you. Yeah. See, I watch. I know. Yeah, You've developed so many different shows. A lot of people out there want to, you know, pitch shows and figure out how to, how to get a piece of the cheese, how to be just like you. What advice can you give to a young, aspiring, I don't know, show creator, show developer? Um, it's hard. It's very difficult. So let me try and be... Uh, optimistic here for a second. You really want to go where no one has gone before, really. Yeah. I mean, you really have to try and find a place. If your show feels similar yeah, yeah. or feels derivative yeah. than somebody else, it's hard for a newcomer to make that show work because the, the incumbents, yes. that's where their right. strength is. So you're really off taking a chance with something crazy or ridiculous. So how do you compromise? I, I love crazy and ridiculous. Oh, that's good, because so do I. I my office, I go, I want to hear a stupid idea. Nice. Because stupid ideas often take you to great places. Yeah, okay, well, I might have to talk to you after this. I might have some <laughs> stupid ideas.